Here we will look at subtracting mixed numbers using number lines. This standard builds on the work students did in fourth grade, where they subtracted fractions with like denominators. It also requires students to apply what they learned about finding equivalent fractions, since their work in fifth grade involves fractions with unlike denominators using related fractions. Related fractions are like what you see here with one tenth and four fifth, in which one denominator is a multiple of the other. Students in fifth grade are also expected to use benchmark fractions to assess the reasonableness of answers. They should have ample experiences using models to build understanding and to allow them to use reasonableness to find a common denominator prior to using the algorithm. Here we'll look at finding the difference between 8 and 1 tenth and 6 and 4 fifths. Before we begin, we'll estimate. I know that 8 and 1 tenth is close to 8 holes. It's just 1 tenth more from 8, whereas it's 9 tenths away from 9. And 6 and 4 fifths is close to 7. It's 4 fifths away from 6, but just 1 fifth away from 7. And I know that 8 minus 7 would be 1. So this lets me know that our answer will be close to 1. It'll actually be a little bit more than that since I rounded down the amount we were subtracting from and rounded up the amount that we were taking away. However, our answer will be close to 1. So to begin to solve, we're going to draw a, an open number line. I'm going to start at the end here with the amount that we are subtracting from, which is 8 and 1 tenth. Now I know that I need to subtract 6 and 4 fifths from 8 and 1 tenth. The first thing I can do is just go ahead and subtract the 6 holes. So if I subtracted 6 holes from 8 and 1 tenth, I know I would be at 2 and 1 tenth. Now we would have to figure out how we can take away the 4 fifths. At this point in the unit and students work with fractions, they are probably going to be able to use their reasonableness and their experience to quickly recognize that 4 fifths is equivalent to 8 tenths and use that uh, to finish solving. However, if that's not the case, students could create a number line to find this. They could create an area model and show 4 fifths and then split that into 10 equal parts. Anything um, like that would work to help support them. Uh, I'm just going to make a note over here that we are going to work with this as 6 and 8 tenths. We're going to use that equivalent fraction. So now to continue the subtraction, I'm at 2 and 1 tenth. I think it would be easy if I break down this 8 tenths rather than just trying to subtract all 8 tenths at once. I know if I subtract 1 tenth, I would be at exactly 2 holes, and I would have 7 more tenths to subtract. Now for some people, subtracting 7 tenths all at once might make sense and be able to be done. Um, for others, we may need to break that down a little bit. I'm just going to subtract 1 more tenth. I know if I took one tenth away from two holes, that that would leave me with one and nine tenths. And a way I can think about that is I know that two holes is equivalent to one and ten tenths. And so if I just took one tenth away from that, I would be down to one and nine tenths. So I've subtracted two tenths out of the eight tenths I need to subtract. Now that I'm looking at one and nine tenths, it would be pretty easy to go ahead and just subtract the rest of the tenths. I know that's six more tenths that I need to subtract. And I know that nine tenths minus six tenths would be three tenths. So I would end up at one and three tenths. So this lets me know that the difference between eight and one tenth and six and four fifths is one and three tenths. We had estimated that our answer would be around one, but a little bit more. And that is true of one and three tenths. So we know that answer is very reasonable. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and show just another way that students might solve this same problem. Sometimes, I'm just going to show a number line right below here, students like to find the difference by starting with the number that they're going to that would be subtracted, and they're going to work their way up to 8 and 1 tenth. So that would look like this. We would make a number line. We would start at 6 and 4 fifths. And here we're using our knowledge of inverse operations to find the difference. We are going to figure out, well, what is the distance between 6 and 4 fifths 
and 8 and 1 tenth. And so we know already that we were looking at 6 and 4 fifths as 6 and 8 tenths. So I'm also just going to label that here. And so now we can go ahead and start to work our way up to 8 and 1 tenth. I'll just switch colors so we can see this clearly here. So first thing I would do here is I know if I added two more tenths, that would get me up to 10 tenths and allow us to make a new hole. So I'm going to add two tenths. And that would be six and 10 tenths or seven holes. So I'd be at seven now. Now I know I need to get to eight. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump one hole. That would get us to eight. And then I know to get from eight to eight and one tenth, I just need to add one more tenth. So I've been able to find the difference between eight, uh, six and eight tenths and eight and one tenth by using addition. Now, the way that I can see what the answer is here is I need to figure out, well, how much did I have to jump to get from six and four fifths to eight and one tenth? So here I had two tenths. Here I had one hole, so we would be at one and two tenths. And then here I had another tenth. So we would be at one and three tenths, which is the same thing as what we got up here. So those are two different ways students might be able to subtract mixed numbers using number lines.